Today's lesson is on viewport navigation and optimal project settings. Between you and me, Jason's been having a lot of crashes ever since he switched to version 5.5. The new Megalites is impressive, sure, but something feels a little off. Let's hope he can make it through this time. I guess we'll find out soon enough. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is open up the project. The one thing you might notice is that it just opens to a blank scene. We have to actually open up that level that we saved the last time. So we're gonna go up to File, Recent Levels, and click on Main. Now that we've got Main open, we're gonna look for a character in the outliner over here to the right. Just select it to highlight it and hit F to frame on that character. And again, we wanna go back to where we hold down the Alt key, hold down the left mouse button and drag to rotate around the character. If you don't rotate around the character, just make sure to frame on it again and do that again. Hold down Alt and hold down the left mouse button and then drag. Let me just show you really quickly how you can change the default level that opens when the project opens, because as you noticed before, when you open the project, it opened a blank level. So if you go up here to edit, project settings, and then in the search box, type in here, start. And then under default maps, editor startup map, uh, see so yeah, open world is selected currently, but if you change this to main one we save, then once that's selected, it'll open that level. Next, we're looking for ray tracing. So in the box, type in R-A-Y-T-R, -R, and we want to make sure to check this box for use hardware ray tracing when available. You probably already have this box checked for support hardware ray tracing. But if you don't, go ahead and check this box here. Uh, next thing we're going to look for is auto exposure. So let's clear out this. Type in A-U-T-O-E-X. We're going to turn off auto exposure. So under auto exposure, just uncheck the box. Next thing, we can just close out of these project settings. We're going to change our directional light angle. And so go ahead and select directional light up in the upper right outliner. And then go to the details tab down here below. Let's just reset the rotation just to make it easier. It's going to get really bright, of course. Leave this as zero, the first column. Second column is going to be negative 15. And third column is 45 degrees. And then we're going to change the lux down to five. This lighting is just a lot nicer on the eyes and less blown out, a little more natural looking. And we're going to make it even a little bit darker. We're going to go up here to this quickly add to project button and the drop down. And just so you can see where it is, you're going to go to volumes, post process volume. Another way you can do it is just search in here post. And you'll have probably three different options, but it doesn't matter which one you click. Just click on the top one. And you can see that the gizmo is here. It kind of looks like it's embedded in the character. It's actually behind her if we rotate around. While that's selected, I'm just going to reset the transform over here. You don't have to do this. It doesn't actually matter. And it still should be selected up here in the outliner. Then we're going to change a couple settings with the post-process volume. The first thing is infinite extent unbound. So we're going to put UNB just for short. Check the box. And then all that means is that everything inside and outside that post-process volume box will be affected by our changes. So I'm just going to rotate back around the character here. Make sure post-process volume is selected. We're going to type in here exposure and the metering mode should be checked. Uh, the next thing is uh, exposure compensation. And then under here, under min EV100, we're going to check that box and change this number to one. And max EV100, we're going to change the max to one as well. And it'll get a lot darker, but it's just much more pleasant, natural sunset light that I personally prefer. And then I can add more lights later. Uh, let's also change some reflection settings to make sure that our post-process volume is still selected because I actually selected away from mine. And the easiest way to find it is just to search for it in the outliner. And then once it's selected, just in here, type reflection, R-E-F-L is fine. Check the box for method and leave that in lumen. And then we're just going to check all these under lumen reflections. I'm going to leave almost all of them default. The only thing we're going to change is under max refraction bounces. We're going to just change that to one. We're going to go ahead and save the project. So click down here to the unsaved and click save selected. Let's go ahead and move on to keyboard and mouse controls. And we already started kind of doing that by selecting the character and hitting the F to frame on the character and then holding the Alt key down. And as you're holding the Alt key, hold the left mouse button and rotate around up and down, all that kind of fun stuff. So now uh, just go ahead and release that and hit the G on the keyboard. So what G does is it allows you to see or hide the editor icons and virtual production equipment, such as like transform gizmos, lights, cameras, and object outlines. So if you hit G again, whatever you have selected, it's going to be highlighted. You're going to see 
things like this, which is the skylight gizmo essentially for controlling that. So the next thing I'm going to show you is how to place an object on a surface. And this doesn't work in every instance, but with characters, a lot of times it does work if you've got a floor and you've got a character. So we've got Simone selected. If we've got this transform gizmo, and if you don't have that, go up here and click on this button right here, or hit the W on the keyboard. And that's going to give you this XYZ transform location gizmo that we need. You're going to hover over this arrow right here and click it and hold the mouse button and drag up. And that's going to move her elevation up. If you, if you put a character in a scene and you see that their feet are off the ground or their feet are in the floor, you can drag them above the surface and then hit the end key on the keyboard and it'll drop them right back down to the surface again. And it should come pretty close to, to getting their feet right on the ground. It may be that it embeds their feet slightly in the ground. See, as you can see here, it does that. Uh, so you can make minor adjustments as needed. The next thing I'm going to show you really quickly is what these buttons are. These, these are definitely things you want to get familiar with because you're going to be using them all the time. Some of these, if you hover over them, you'll see hold control alt for more. And, it, and if you do that, you'll see more details that'll actually explain what that button is used for. Not all of these have that as an option, but you can hold down the control and alt on the keyboard and just hover over them and it'll give you more information about them. But for now, all you really need to know is that these are used mainly for navigating around and maneuvering objects in the scene. In this case, we've got this one selected, which is the translate. Uh, this one is a rotate, left, right. You can rotate her on this axis or this axis. And let's say you've got her like that. You're like, oh, well, I want her back to normal. Just select these back arrows and it'll get her back to normal. We had an 140 degree rotated angle on her, so I'm just going to put that back in here. Okay, so now we got her back to the way she was. Got this scale objects button. That's R on the keyboard. And that one allows you to change the scale of an object in different directions. So you can grab this one and drag her so she's taller, shorter. I'm just going to control Z to undo that. This one... If you drag left and right, if you just hover over it and drag left and right, if you click and hold, good, that'll change her width. I'm going to undo that. Control Z. And this one is front back, so you're going to click and drag this front and back. And you can't really tell from this angle, but you can see her feet getting bigger. That's changing her depth. And you're not really going to do that on characters usually. It's going to be on objects, but just for demonstration purposes. Uh, the next one is, this is all one button. It's just a matter of whether or not you have snapping on or not. So if you click this to highlight it blue, it means snapping is on. If you click it to unhighlight it, it means it won't snap. And I'll show you what I mean by that. If I have a snapping enabled and I drag her up. So this is a snap value of 10 of how much it moves when you go do one level of snapping. And then if we disable that, so unhighlight it, and then we drag up. You can see how it just moves smoothly. It's ignoring snapping. You can just move it however much you want, really minute amounts if you want. And I'm just hitting end on the keyboard to bring her back down. Let's turn snapping back on. Typically, I always leave snapping on. It's just more convenient most of the time, but there's times when you need to make fine adjustments and it's better to have it off. So this is for movement in the world. If you're moving the object around, up, down, left, right, back, forward, then this is where you change your snapping quantities. You could change this number to one of these other ones, one of the other presets, and it'll change how much it moves. So let's try 100. See, that's 100 units. It moves, it just moves it much farther. Let's go down to one. You can, almost can't even tell when it's on wood. But if you put it on five, then you'll see it just moves a little bit and then snaps, snap, snap, snap. You can see her hair kind of shaking. And again, back down to the surface. 10 is the, is the default and snapping is usually on. And this is the angle. So this is at how much of a degree that it will snap to. So if you've got it in this E mode and you're changing the angle, You'll see that it snaps. Let's just undo that. Control Z. So now we've got it in the angle mode, which is E on the keyboard or click this button. And when it's in that mode, this is how much it will snap in that mode. So if you click this snapping off, you'll see that it's smooth. If snapping's on, it will move 10 degrees. So snap. 
like that. You can see your hair move. Control Z. So then if we change this to let's just say 45 degrees, she's going to snap to 45. Control Z. And I'm just going to change this back to 10 because that's a good number. And this is for scaling. So the scaling amount and how much it's going to snap. So if you go to scaling, you can hover over here to see the letter on the keyboard you need to do R hit R on the keyboard for scaling. So if I do that, it's going to be 0.25 at a time. Control Z. If we're going to go up to like 10, that's going to, she's going to stretch way out the first step. If I frame on her, look at how stretched out she is. Control Z, F, frame back in. The last button you're going to be using a lot of is this camera speed button. So you click that to select it, and then you can adjust this slider or type in a number here. One is the default, and this is how much you move around when you're actually moving in the viewport. So if you, if you want to just click and hold the left mouse button just to test it out to see what I mean. If you click and hold the left mouse button and drag forward and backward or left and right, forward and backward is going to be a better way to demonstrate this particular thing. So just drag forward and backward and now just release it. And now if you click this and change the speed, change it to like, let's do eight. Now, if we do forward and backward, you can see how much farther you, how much farther of a distance you can go with the same amount of mouse movement while you click and drag with the left mouse button. Let's get this, this back down to one. So that's how you adjust the camera speed in general, but then there's also this multiplier down here. Let's say you have it on eight, and then you put in two, it's going to multiply it times two. So it'll be like 16. Then you're going to move by scale of 16. And it just keeps multiplying. So if you max this out, Let's get this back to one and see what max is. Max is 32, but if you do two, it changes it to 64. So it's just a way to make this number go even higher than if you need to really move around fast. If you're in a huge area and you just have to move really fast, you can you know crank this up all the way and then multiply this to whatever you want. Let's say 20. Look at that, 64, 64. That's going to move way too fast. And this is an example of what I'm talking about when you end up in space. You're like, oh my God, what do I, I don't even know what to do. Just type the character's name in here, up here or something that's in the center of the world. Type it in the outliner search, select it, hit F on the keyboard to frame back into that character. And then make sure to clear this outliner box out so you don't think that your all your stuff's been deleted or something. So now you've moved back into your character and just also make sure to try to change this stuff back so that uh, it's back to the default, which is just one for the scaler. And then you could change this back down to one or something, one or two or three or whatever you're comfortable with. Um, I usually, when I first started out, I started kept this at like 0.33 and kept the scaler at one. That's a good speed for just moving around kind of slow until you get used to moving around in here. You really don't want to move around too fast at first because it's easy to get lost or get to be in the wrong place or move something way farther than you wanted to move it. All right, let's learn some more controls. Go ahead and select your character again and hit F just to make sure it's framed. Just rotate around just for good practice on that. Make sure you've got a mouse that's got a center wheel. If you just rotate the wheel, you'll see that it zooms in and out. Just whatever camera angle you happen to be at at that moment is what it's going to zoom in and out on. So if you're zoomed in, and you, as long as you've got your character selected, just hit F on the keyboard and it'll frame back into that character. And you, or you can just select it over here again. So if you're like, oh man, I just zoomed way in, just do the same thing. Select it over here, F. It'll bring you back. Now if you press down on the wheel and then you move up and down, it actually moves up and down in the world. And if you do left and right, left and right. So this is the way I prefer to move uh, to pan. So if you go pan up, down, left, right, by holding the center mouse button, the wheel mouse, just holding it in and moving the mouse around. And then if you, let's say you centered on your character, F, and you want to zoom in, you're going to hold down the Alt key. And as you're holding down the Alt key, hold down the right mouse button and then drag backwards on the mouse. It's going to go right into their crotch, but you know, <laughs> You'll start off there and then just do the same instructions that I gave you earlier. 
release those, release the keyboard mouse, and then click on the center button. And as you're holding that, push up so it zooms, so it pans up. And you can also just go ahead and hit F. Let's do that again. So hold down the Alt, hold down the right mouse button, and drag backwards on the mouse. Another way is, you know, frame back in, move up first so that their face is kind of in the center of the viewport. If you wanted to zoom in on their face, hold down the Alt key, hold down the right mouse button and zoom in. So you're just on their face then. All right, let's reframe again. And then now you're going to do a left click and a drag. And all this is, all this really does is rotate the camera. So as opposed to a pan, which is the center mouse button, which is just up and down, left to right, sliding, a strafing, essentially. Let's frame again. So practice left, right, up, down, just looking with your neck, essentially. And then center button and see what the difference is. So you're just doing kind of like a strafe. But up and down, left, right, as opposed to rotating. Let's go and frame on the character again. And now we're going to use the keyboard game controls in combination with the mouse. And this is the way that's easiest, in my opinion, to move around. So you're going to press and hold the right mouse button. And as you're holding it, just keep it held. And then we're going to use the same gaming controls you'd use in a game. So uh, in this case, you have to hold the mouse button down though on the right. And then, then you can do W to move forward and rotate up W. You know, if you want to go up and then turn around with your mouse, just holding the, the mouse button down, the right mouse button, just going to keep that held. And if, let's say, you want to get to that character, center them in the viewport, W, and just keep adjusting. Don't, don't have to keep holding the keyboard down. Just tap it just to move a little bit. And if for some reason you're moving around way too fast, just make sure to go up here to this camera speed and change it. Drop it down. Drop it down as low as you want. 0.33 is a pretty good number, I think, um, when you're first starting out. Unless you're an experienced gamer and you already know how to move around a world really well, you can probably do whatever speed you want, whatever you're comfortable with. But I would start at 0.33 just to get the practice. And then, so right mouse button. So that's just W. And, you know, moving the mouse up and down. And W. And then there's all the other ones. So A W, A, S, D and E and Q as well. So that's up and down. I don't usually use E and Q very often because I use the center mouse button, but if you want to do that, if you want to do Q to go down and E to go up, you can do that. But I prefer the center button for that. It's just I feel like I have more control that way. Uh, so let's do W. So let's move forward, you know, kind of adjust as you go. I'm going to do S to move backwards to see her kind of disappear and you could kind of rotate the camera as, as needed. W, D to strafe right, A to strafe left. And so when you're moving around, that's how you do the strafing, is with holding the right mouse button, A, D. And then if you ever get just totally lost, like I said, just select your character again, hit F on the keyboard, and then you may need to Hold the alt, alt key and drag with your left mouse button just to circle back around to them. And that's how you do use a keyboard and mouse to navigate around the viewport. And just make sure to remember that you can always get back to where you were if you just select it in the outliner and hit F to bring you back to wherever you want to be. Wherever you want to be. Wherever you want to be. B, B, B. <laughs>